in this video we will discuss two main glomerular diseases that are minimal change disease and focal segmented glomerular sclerosis so let's start with the minimal change disease firstly we will study its pathogenesis and after that we will study its morphology in details but before its pathogenesis i want to mention two small points about minimal change disease the first point is that minimal change disease is called minimal change because on light microscopic view there is no or minimal change in the morphological structure Secondly you need to remember that this minimal change disease is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children Now let's move to the pathogenesis So basically this disease minimal change disease starts when there are some unknown stimuli that stimulates the lymphocytes to release some special cytokines or inflammatory mediators that are called serum factors Now the serum factors that are circulating in the blood reach at the level of glomerulus and when they arrive at that glomerulus they cause damage to the food processes of podocytes This damage to the food processes of podocytes causes flattening of food processes of podocytes that is known as effacement of food processes. Now you know that basically the function of food processes of podocytes is to provide attachment to a negatively charged protein nephrin that prevents the plasma protein to filter into the urine. But now as the podocytes are being damaged so the proteins will start filtering into the urine. This leakage of proteins in urine or protein urea will further lead to hypoproteinemia and due to decrease in level of plasma proteins in blood so it will shift from blood vessels into the intracellular compartment producing edema and also due to the loss of some proteins that are inhibitors of ldl synthesis there will be hyperlipidemia so now you know that this combination of symptoms and signs that are protein urea hypoproteinemia edema and hyperlipidemia this is called nephrotic syndrome so let's again review the pathogenesis of minimal change disease briefly In minimal change disease some idiopathic reasons stimulate lymphocytes to release serum factors that damage the food processes of podocytes resulting in protein urea or nephrotic syndrome. Now let's come to the morphology of minimal change disease. As far as the morphology of any glomerular disease is concerned it is studied under three main headings that are light microscopy, electron microscopy and immunofluorescence. In case of minimal change disease light microscopy will show no or minimum change in the structure of glomeruli that's why we call it as minimal change disease however in cells of proximal convoluted tubule you will be able to see the appearance of vacuoles in the cytoplasm of these cells these vacuoles are actually formed by the ingestion of these proteins that were being leaked into the tubules as a part of necro as a part of nephrotic syndrome now on electron microscope the change that you will able to see is the effacement of food processes which means that the surface of podocyte that should normally have foot foot like projections will be flattened now due to the podocyte injury along with this you may be able to see the detachment of some podocytes from their location so on electron microscopy you see effacement of food processes or you see focal detachment of some podocytes from their location thirdly as far as the immunofluorescence is concerned the result of the test will be negative for any antibody or complement proteins The reason is that the minimal change disease is not caused by any antigen antibody complex or any complement proteins rather it is caused by some circulating serum factors in the blood as we already studied in its pathogenesis therefore the result of immunochemical staining will be negative this is a very important point you need to remember that the result of immunochemical staining will be negative so overall in minimal change disease on light microscopy you see no or minimal visible change on electron microscopy you see effacement or focal detachment of podocytes and immunohistochemical staining is negative for antibodies or complement proteins now lastly as far as the clinical features of minimal change disease is concerned it presents with nephrotic syndrome characterized by edema hypoalbuminemia protein urea and hyperlipidemia and in most of the children the disease gets resolved with a short course of corticosteroid therapy but there is a small number of children who might need not respond to corticosteroid therapy therefore they are known as non responders but generally the disease can be treated by corticosteroids or steroids this concludes our discussion on minimal change disease now let's come to the next disease that is called focal segmental glomerular sclerosis firstly we will discuss its pathogenesis which is almost similar to that of minimal change disease however there are some major changes that you need to focus carefully now the initial part of pathogenesis is similar that there are some unknown factors that stimulate the lymphocytes to release serum factors These circulating serum factors cause damage to food processes of podocytes which again result in effacement of food processes and this damage to food processes will lead to leakage of plasma proteins into urine that will rise that will give rise to nephrotic syndrome 
Now up to this point the pathogenesis of minimal change disease was also similar but here there is an additional factor that at some points or at some foci the protocytes are so much damaged that there is massive leakage of proteins this increased amount of leaked proteins get deposited in the form of hyaline material around the glomerular vessels additionally in area of this protein leakage there is also some reactive proliferation of mesangial matrix this leaked proteins and mesangial matrix which have been deposited as hyaline material around the glomerular vessels causes compression of these glomerular capillaries which results in narrowing of glomerular capillaries that is called glomerulosclerosis therefore this disease is known as focal segmental glomerulosclerosis and as the glomerular capillaries are being narrowed or sclerosed so in few cases it can also result in hypertension or hematuria due to the damage of these glomerular vessels and you have to keep this point in mind that this narrowing of glomerular capillaries that cause hematuria or hypertension does not occur at all in minimal change disease this is another difference between minimal change disease and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis now an additional point that i want to mention here is that in some cases of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis they are not caused by idiopathic reasons rather they occur secondary to some other reasons these factors can be remembered by the mnemonic triple h triple h where triple h stand for hiv heroin and hereditary so all these secondary factors can contribute to focal segmental glomerulosclerosis now let's review the pathogenesis briefly in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis some unknown factors or some secondary factors stimulate lymphocytes to release serum factors these serum factors damage the food processes of podocytes leading to protein urea as well as deposition of hyaline material around the glomerular capillaries this causes narrowing of glomerular vessels that is called glomerulosclerosis now let's come to the morphology of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis for microscopic features the keywords to remember are focal segmental hyalinosis and sclerosis focal segmental hyalinosis and sclerosis so the first keyword is focal now you know that our kidney is made up of millions of nephrons and each nephron is made up of one glomerulus but in this disease focal segmental glomerulosclerosis all the millions of glomeruli are not damaged rather only some of the glomeruli are damaged and the rest are spared that's why we called it as focal now the next keyword is segmental now the word segmental means that even in one glomerulus not all the glomerular capillary loops are affected rather only a segment of capillary loops is affected so you can see in this diagram so we call it this so, so we call this pattern as segmental so this disease is focal as well as segmental the third keyword is hyalinosis and this represents deposition of hyaline material around the capillaries and increase in amount of mesangial matrix the last keyword is sclerosis which means that on microscopy you will see narrowed capillaries so overall on microscopy you see glomeruli affected by hyalinosis and sclerosis and the pattern is focal and segmental now there are some variants of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis that should be studied along with this one of these is global sclerosis global sclerosis global means that the pattern of involvement of glomerulus will not be just confined to some of the glomeruli rather it will affect all the glomeruli in kidney another variant is collapsing glomerulonephritis in which the glomeruli tend to collapse by the formation of fibrous tissue now on electron microscopy the changes are similar to that of minimal change disease first is effacement or flattening of food processes of podocytes and the second is detachment of some podocytes from their location now as far as the immunofluorescence is concerned then you know that this disease is not mediated by antigen antibody complexes or complement proteins so immunofluorescence staining is usually negative but in few cases there may be non specific trapping of igm antibody and c3 complement proteins so this so the result of immunofluorescence can be positive for these on some cases only in some cases this concludes our discussion on minimal change disease and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis